corrections, corrective actions, and preventive actions. In some organizations with some or other system of quality management, many people are not clear about the difference between corrections and corrective actions. There is often even more confusion as to the difference between corrective actions and preventive actions. In summary, a correction is an action taken to address a particular instance of non-compliance. A corrective action is an action taken to prevent recurrence of a non-compliance that has been found. A preventive action is an action taken to prevent occurrence of a non-compliance in the first place. Put differently, if the preventive action had been in place, then the problem would not have occurred. Let's clarify with two sets of examples, one from manufacturing and the other from a service organization, in this case, a long-term care nursing home. First of all, even before you get a correction, you must have a problem to be addressed, which might also be called a non-conformance or defect or just an issue. So an auto manufacturer might have a problem on their Zippy Safe T, a new model of car recently released for sale, where a small handful of customers have complained that seat belts don't seem to be fastening properly. Problem two, the ABC to XYZ residence, a long-term care home, has recently had two critical incidents, both involving a resident having a fall. Let's follow these two problems through for correction, corrective action, and preventive action. You begin with an investigation to properly identify and describe the problem. We ask questions like what, where, when, how often, how serious, are there any limiting conditions? You can also ask questions like where or when might we have expected to find the problem but did not. In other words, the investigation is all about gathering as much information as possible about the problem with two objectives in mind. <clears throat> One, determine the importance and urgency of containing the problem with an immediate correction. And two, determine whether the problem calls for a corrective action to be initiated. Let us say that it is determined that both these problems warrant an immediate correction to deal with the immediate causes of the problem. In the case of the seat belts, the investigation showed that a clip was out of alignment. The faulty seat belts were replaced with seat belts where the clips were inspected to be correctly aligned. In the case of the long-term care home, the investigation showed that resident number 001 was not being assisted by two personal support workers, PSWs, for certain activities as directed in the plan of care, the POC. A correction was immediately implemented by informing all affected PSWs of the change in the plan of care. Seeing as this was a critical incident involving resident health and safety and the possibility of serious injury to the resident, it was also determined to implement a corrective action to prevent recurrence of this incident. The required assistance stipulated on resident 001's plan of care following an earlier fall had not been transcribed to the cardex for resident 1, used by the PSWs resulting in the incorrect assistance being given. The cardex has now been updated as a corrective action to prevent recurrence of this incident. In addition, a review of the CARDIC system was initiated to ensure that it accurately reflects the latest instructions in the plan of care for all residents as they pertain to personal support workers.
A malfunctioning seat belt was seen by the auto manufacturer as a safety concern, and they also decided to proceed with a corrective action. A recall was issued on all 98,000 of the model Zippy Safe Tees. It was easy to determine seat belts with a misaligned clip. Wherever that was found, the seat belt was replaced as a corrective action to prevent recurrence of this defect. In their concern for public safety, and out of fear of being sued for millions and fined for millions more by automobile regulators, the auto manufacturer decided to conduct a root cause analysis of their seatbelt problem to see if they should also undertake preventive action. A misaligned clip was the direct or proximate cause of the seatbelt malfunction, but how or why was the clip misaligned? What was the root or underlying cause? Going into the details of root cause analysis is beyond the scope of this presentation. Suffice to say that root cause analysis looks for the underlying systemic problem with an associated process that management can reasonably address. It would not be helpful to argue that gravity is the root cause of the resident falling, since management cannot do anything about that. In the case of the malfunctioning seat belt, it was found that one of six assembly tools had not been recalibrated when switching back to a production run for the Zippy Safe T. There had also been a switch in operators, and the second operator had not been aware of the change in tooling and did not perform all the required inspections at the start of the run. As a result, management implemented a preventive action by making a number of changes to the processes and procedures associated with these lapses. They were confident that had these changes to the process been in place, the original defect with the misaligned clip would not have occurred. At the ABC to XYZ residence, the Director of Care and the Administrator agreed that preventive action was called for given the severity of the repeated critical incident, even though the resident had only suffered minor injuries from her falls. After performing root cause analysis, the policy or procedure for updating the plan of care now adds an approval step to ensure that the CARDEX system has been updated prior to final approval of the plan of care documentation change. Not every problem needs to be resolved down to the level of preventive action or for that matter to corrective action common sense should prevail. In these examples, root cause analysis was conducted after the corrective action. In many instances, it will be more appropriate to conduct root cause analysis before the corrective action. The important thing is that there should be a thorough investigation of any problem, including an analysis of risk, to determine whether corrective action should be done and where the preventive action should be done.